Earlier in this module, in the statistics track, we talked about data science, big data, and we briefly talked about databases. In this tech track, we want to start talking more specifically about databases. And we'll start with the definition. The database is defined as the actual data being stored in the database, along with the schema, how that data is structured. And databases are maintained in software on computers by DBMSs, database management systems. Now this is software that helps us access and maintain and run and get information out of databases. DBMSs do a lot of different things. But now let's talk about SQL. SQL is a specific programming language that manages data but it manages data in a relational database management system, an R DBMS. This R stands for relational, so why relational? What does the word relational have to do with the structure of these databases? In the simplest terms, you take the full data set, all the data you include in your database, all the information that's there, and you make subsets of the data, logical subsets of the data, called data tables. And you build the relationships between these tables. You build the connections between these tables. This will be fully explained when we walk through the Lehman Baseball database in the next video. We'll talk about the relations between tables in the Lehman database. The Lehman database will be the first database we use in this course to better understand how to use both SQL and understand what relational database management systems do. But that's why we call it a relational database. Relations between the data tables and all the related data tables make up the whole database. Again, SQL is a relational database management system. And there are plenty of other relational database management systems besides SQL. But SQL is the one we're going to be using in Sabermetrics 101. And it is widely used, especially in sports analytics. In sports and in baseball specifically, it is essentially the standard for querying data in baseball databases used by major league teams. So when you want to ask questions about the data using SQL, in other words, this is the essence of baseball science and baseball analytics. You want to ask questions and you want to grab the data that helps you answer those questions. When you want to ask questions, you're going to run what's called a quote, SQL query. SQL query is the key component of a SQL command in the programming language that will get you access to the data you want from the questions you have. So again, SQL, SQL is the standard for querying data and it's used widely in all fields, but especially sports analytics. Now, there are other database management systems, not just relational database management systems. There are navigational database management systems and they were the early forms of DBMSs. Under navigational, there were hierarchical databases and network databases. The details of these different database types aren't really important for Sabermetrics 101, as we will only be working with relational databases. As you go further into your study of data science, though, as you learn more about database systems when you study to become a data analyst, you'll figure out the real differences between hierarchical databases, network databases, and relational databases. But the key here is flexibility and the intuitive design of how you put the data together in tables throughout the whole database. So that's the main reason we study SQL. It makes intuitive sense as you structure your data a certain way. And it's also the standard for querying data in databases. It's become the industry standard. Bottom line, sports analytics departments want to see in their analysts SQL skills and SQL knowledge. 
Five tools for the players on the field, SQL tools for the baseball ops staff. They want employees and analysts that understand SQL and use SQL and can run SQL queries. So that's why we're going to introduce to you, the learner in this course, SQL. And hopefully you'll learn as much SQL as you need to do your own research and queries. Now, SQL comes in many flavors and dialects. We're going to be using MySQL. So let's just go over a few notes, a few words about databases, SQL, and MySQL. Now recall there are three kinds of databases out there. Three kinds of databases out there. There are hierarchical, there are network, and then finally the one we're going to be focusing on most is the relational. So in a relational database you structure your data into data tables and you cross-reference all the tables where possible to make all the connections in the data you want to store in the database. And we have a great example of a baseball relational database in the next video. But again, there are many different kinds of database systems, hierarchical, network, and relational. And within these database management systems that run these database, one of them, one of them is SQL, just one of the programming languages that allow you access to the data in the databases. Now there are many different kinds of SQLs. There's been SQL designed for different platforms, Windows, Linux, Mac OS, and others. There's been SQLs that have been designed for single users or over networks that have to manage clients and servers. SQL was created many years ago by people at IBM, but SQL today has many different flavors. Lots and lots of different SQLs out there. Now that's because it's open source and people have designed different versions of SQL to suit their own specific needs. So there's different SQLs out there. And again, different kinds of databases, different kinds of SQLs, different flavors of the SQL language itself. And the one we're going to be using is called MySQL. This is the flavor, the dialect, the version of SQL that we're going to be using in this class. MySQL is the one that we care about here. It is the most widely used dialect of SQL. So again, relational databases dominate the database world. SQL is the dominant database programming language and MySQL is the dominant flavor of SQL. That is the main reason why MySQL is the is the version of SQL we're going to be using inside the BU SQL Sandbox. Again, lots of different SQL flavors out there. We had lots of choices when we designed our SQL Sandbox, but we went with MySQL because it's such an industry standard. And for the rest of the course, we'll be referring to MySQL as SQL. We'll use them interchangeably. Just so you know, We've had tens of thousands of students sign up for the Sabermetrics 101 MOOC on the edX platform. Thousands of students who might run different OS platforms, have different needs, and the difficulty around trying to set up each and every student's SQL the right way led us to develop the most excellent, awesome BU SQL Sandbox. Now we're going to walk you through how to use the BU SQL Sandbox with the Layman Baseball Relational Database later in this module. But this is, in our opinion, one of the easiest ways to learn SQL or MySQL by using our BU SQL Sandbox. Right after this video, I'm going to describe the Layman Database. I'll describe what a relational database actually looks like by looking at the tables inside the database. And it's all about baseball. And then after that video describing the Lemon database, we're going to go ahead and introduce you to the SQL Sandbox and start running queries, baseball queries, to get baseball data inside the SQL Sandbox. Now one final comment. We discussed big data 
in a previous video segment. And just to make, make a comment about SQL and big data. MySQL isn't necessarily the best DBMS for big data. Data that's really unstructured doesn't do as well in a very structured relational database system. There are other database management systems that help manage and are more appropriate for unstructured data.